Hey guys, so in this video we're going to be talking about boron and its role as a semi-essential dietary mineral. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, my name is Zach Allison and welcome to Nutrition Library, your trusted resource for an evidence-based approach to supplementation. If you haven't already or you are new to the channel, I would definitely recommend hitting that red subscribe button that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the four primary health benefits that are associated with boron intake. And then at the end of this video, we're gonna talk about some of the dosing options and why they are so important specifically when it comes to dietary boron intake. So the four primary health benefits that are associated with boron intake are one, inflammation, two, neuron health, three, bone and joint health, and then the fourth health benefit is its benefit to hormone health. So again, the first health benefit that is associated with boron intake is its effects on inflammation. Now, in this study right here, there was a marked reduction in TNF-alpha by 19%, C-reactive protein by 45% and a reduction in interleukin-6 by 44%. Now, I will say that these are fairly remarkable effects that actually rival some other known very potent anti-inflammatories like curcumin and ginger and boswellia and even begin to rival some of the effects of NSAIDs. And so with this being such a small trial, I will say it would be prudent to take this with a grain of salt. However, these are fairly promising results and so it does lead me to be somewhat optimistic. Now, the second health benefit that is associated with boron intake is improvement in neuron health. Now, this study right here has demonstrated the negative effects of both magnesium and boron deficiency in the human brain. And now, specifically how they showed that is a little bit too much to get into for this video, but suffice it to say that boron and magnesium deficiency separately had a significant negative effect on brain function and how the brain actually communicates to itself. And so how the different lobes of the brain communicated and how much um, ability and power and the specific types of waves that were being emitted by the specific regions of the brain. And so the researchers determined from this study that both boron and magnesium have very specific and very notable effects when it comes to their position as dietary minerals. And now, again, we really don't know exactly how boron is interacting with the brain, but the researchers in this study were postulating that it could be because of boron's interaction with other dietary minerals like magnesium and calcium and potassium. And they were also postulating that it could also be through increased and in improvements in hormone metabolism like sex hormones and vitamin D. And now again, these are all just theories right now, but it is clear that boron does interact with other dietary minerals in some form or fashion. And so a lot of the researchers right now are postulating that boron's interaction with the body is heavily dependent on its interaction with other dietary compounds. Now, the third health benefit that's associated with boron intake are improvements in bone health and joint health. Now, this double-blind pilot study that was conducted in 20 arthritic patients showed a fairly remarkable reduction of 50% in arthritic symptoms. And the researchers in this paper showed fairly conclusive evidence that boron intake is associated with positive outcomes in both bone health and joint health. And now again, the reason for this is assumed to be its interaction with dietary minerals and vitamin D metabolism because of the effects of those two things on bone and joint health. Now, the fourth health benefit that's associated with boron intake is its effects on hormone health. 
Now, this study that was mentioned previously in regards to inflammation also measured sex hormone levels after a period of six hours and after seven days, and the results here are fairly interesting. So 12 milligrams of boron in eight healthy men after six hours showed a 15% increase in free testosterone, a 10% increase in DHT, which is a metabolite of testosterone, and then roughly a 10% decrease in sex hormone binding globulin. And so for those of you that aren't familiar with SHBG, it's simply a molecule and more specifically a protein in the body that binds to testosterone for various reasons. And so theoretically, when you're able to inhibit this protein in the bloodstream, it should theoretically increase the amounts of free testosterone in the bloodstream. And this is apparently what's going on here after a period of six hours. It does look like the SHBG is being inhibited to a slight degree, which is then um, subsequently increasing levels of free testosterone and also the metabolite of testosterone, which is DHT. Now, the interesting thing here is that in the same study, after a period of seven days, that free testosterone apparently continued to increase to the tune of a roughly 29% whereas total testosterone did not increase, which again is pointing to a possible inhibition of SHBG. But the interesting thing is that after seven days, SHBG was not decreased at all. And so it's really not super clear exactly what's going on here, but it does look like there might also be some alteration in the metabolism of testosterone to estrogen because after that seven day period, there was also a decrease in estrogen of 39%, which is fairly interesting because as we'll see here in a minute, another study after four weeks showed an increase in estrogen. So I say that to say that the exact mechanism and what boron specifically does to sex hormones really isn't fully understood yet. Now, in this study that I just mentioned that was conducted in individuals over the period of about four weeks showed a marked increase in free testosterone by 45%, as well as an increase in estrogen of 42%. Now, again, the reason this is so interesting is because it does look like that after a period of about seven weeks that estrogen decreases, and then after a period of four four weeks that there is a marked increase by the same degree. Now, in this study that was performed in 19 young bodybuilders showed that there was only a modest to slight increase in testosterone over the course of about seven weeks. Now, this study doesn't measure DHT or estrogen. It only measured free testosterone, but there was a slight advantage of the individuals that received boron in this study versus the individuals that didn't. And so again, it does seem pretty clear that boron has an effect on sex hormone production and status in the body. However, how it actually does that isn't fully understood yet. And so though boron does appear to have somewhat of a fairly essential role in mineral metabolism as well as vitamin D metabolism that has various effects on things like inflammation, bone health, joint health, um, and even sex hormone status, when it comes to supplementing with boron, there are two primary things that you want to keep in mind. And that is one, that it would probably be prudent to take boron on a daily basis in the lower dosage range of say, three milligrams. And now folks that are trying to optimize inflammation levels and bone health and joint health and just overall health in general, I would definitely recommend sticking to this lower dosage range. Now, for those of you that are trying to optimize sex hormone production or even increase it to some degree, the big thing to keep in mind here is that I would limit high dose supplementation to roughly two weeks weeks. 
Now, there isn't any direct research at the moment on the most optimal cycle would be when it comes to taking boron in the upper range of say 12 milligrams. However, with it decreasing estrogen after a period of a week and then increasing estrogen above baseline levels after four weeks, there does appear to be a shift in how boron actually affects the body. And so in order to avoid the negative effects of increasing estrogen, I do believe again that it would be prudent to limit your high dose dietary intake to roughly two weeks. But other than that, guys, that's all I have for you today. Again, if you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button as well as that like button. It really helps us out in the YouTube algorithm. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I read all those comments and respond to literally every single one. So again, if you have any questions, leave it down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.